Hi de ho neighbors! Sometimes the loudest voices are the smallest minority, and the four people who watch this channel and also shoot 6.5mm Grendel have certainly been loud in their requests. So today we're going to test Lehigh 110 grain controlled chaos in 6.5mm Grendel. 6.5mm Grendel is basically a 7.62x39mm case necked down to fit a 6.5mm bullet. So it is wider than 223 caliber, but narrower than 30 caliber. That also means it can yeet heavier bullets than 223 at higher velocities than is normally possible with 7.62x39, and the bullets found in 6.5 Grendel are normally high ballistic coefficient and sectional density. That means they retain velocity well downrange and ought to penetrate quite deeply, all things being equal. This load makes use of a monolithic solid copper hollow point, not unlike the Hornady GMX or Barnes TSX. But the Lehigh Controlled Chaos line is designed to intentionally shear off the pedals after they expand. Unfortunately, I no longer have access to the 12-inch upper that I was using for testing while a gracious viewer waited for a stamp to clear. So I'll be doing the testing from a 16-inch barrel. Let's get out to the range and fire 6.5mm Grendel Lehigh 110 grain controlled chaos from a 16 inch AR-15 into calibrated 10% natural ballistic gelatin. If you like seeing stuff more than not seeing stuff, take a look at our sponsor, TNVC.com, your source for quality night vision gear to make you the bump in the night. Well, gents, I am Jack's complete lack of surprise. This is pretty typical for controlled chaos in other calibers. There's no reason we shouldn't expect about the same performance in 6.5 Grendel, albeit with a little bit higher sectional density and a little deeper penetration. That said, even in other calibers, controlled chaos does tend to get pretty deep, but this is <laughs> extremely deep. The total penetration here, 24.3 inches. Of course, as we normally see, the neck is very short at about two inches long. Temporary stretch cavity, it's relatively short at six and a half inches, but it's also very wide at probably a little over five inches. It tore out the side of the block here, so it might have had a little bit larger temporary stretch cavity if it had the room for it. This is incredible performance. You know that I've been critical of Lehigh products in the past, but that's mainly because there is no empirical data from credible independent sources that proves that the fluted projectiles offer any real benefit in actual living tissue. Over metal endoskeleton. Not saying that they're not useful, but we don't have credible empirical data on that yet. We do have credible empirical data on fragmenting rifle rounds. We know that fragmentation is an extremely effective wounding mechanism and pre-fail cuts um, designed engineered fragmenting bullets are extremely reliable they fragment in exactly the same way every time is awesome as uh, heavy otm botel hollow point 75 grain 77 grain that sort of thing is as badass as that is in fragmentation this is even better because it can do it reliably and maintain the same retained weight every time Yes, it's extremely deep. You've heard me say before that I don't think that overpenetration is nearly the risk that some people make it out to be. If that's a priority for you, then you should not choose this for defense. But then again, maybe you shouldn't be choosing 6.5 Grendel for home defense if 
quote unquote over penetration is a high priority for you. Everything else, this is absolutely outstanding. It would be very good for hunting. Of course, it would be effective for defense. And it might actually not be a bad idea for large animal defense. Uh, maybe not Kodiak grizzlies, but maybe the <laughs> lower 48 black bears and sort of thing. 22 inches is pretty respectable and having all of this temporary stretch cavity and fragmentation up front, that's pretty good. It's almost like having your cake and eating it too. Let's go ahead and get this projectile out of here and see what it looks like. I don't think we're gonna blow any mines. Let's see if we can get this camera to focus. You can see the front end blew off. The front fell off. Like other controlled chaos, and to some extent, like a Mark 318. And of course, a nice, decently sized base. And that's why it got really good and deep. I wanted you to get a nice close look at one of these fragments here. You can see how far off the main track it went. This is the wound track, and this is where the fragment ended up. That's about four and a half inches diagonally about three and a half inches perpendicular to the track. It's a pretty decent sized fragment too. There you go. You can see like with the other controlled chaos rounds, it's really just a, just a pedal, just like a TSX or a GMX, but it's designed to break off instead of fold back along the shank. Holy tissue destruction, Batman. What an absolute mad lad. The high-speed video shows a baller temporary stretch cavity, savage fragmentation, deep penetration. What's not to like here? As you know, I'm not as concerned about overpenetration as some folks. We've discussed it many times, but the bottom line is that any bullet you fire could hurt someone. And you should be a lot more concerned about what happens to the bullets that miss the target than the ones that actually go through the target. You will miss in a fight, and shooting ammo that penetrates too little is likely to lead to a threat that needs a little bit more lead injection to be a good boy, and therefore more misses. So inadequate penetration is actually more dangerous to bystanders. That said, if you're rocking a 6.5 Grendel for home defense, you probably don't give a shit about overpenetration, so I'm likely preaching to the choir. It's also worth noting that the remaining projectile is simply a little 6.5 millimeter cylindrical plug, so some could argue that it isn't cutting a very wide path after it sheds those petals. That's a fair point. An expanding bullet that retains all of its weight is still cutting a wider wound track, even after it has bled enough velocity that the temporary stretch cavity is no longer in play. You know how we say that rifles are rifles and pistols are pistols and that pistols just aren't remotely as powerful as rifles? Well, that's mostly only true for the first half or so of a rifle's path through tissue. The front end of the track is where the party's at. Lots of dirty deeds going down there. But as the bullet slows down, it's no longer causing wounding distal to the main path of the bullet. You can see that in the disruption left behind in the gel and the size of the temporary stretch cavity observed on high speed. At some point, the velocity is slow enough that the bullet is really only cutting tissues that it directly touches. At this point, it could be considered little different than a pistol bullet in what it does to the tissues it is passing through. If all that commotion early on in the track was spent on a barrier or some part of the target's body that isn't holding its major hydraulic systems, if the bullet is only just reaching vital organs as it slows down, you're going to want the widest bullet possible. That's where a soft point or traditional hollow point would cut a wider path. But that same criticism would apply to any bullet that relies on fragmentation as a wounding mechanism. We don't sit around and whine that 77 grain SMK only has a small core that penetrates to 14 inches. We high-five each other about how badass it fragments. And theoretically, the controlled chaos should do this more consistently, 
across a wider range of velocities being a machined copper bullet. At least in regard to defense, I'd say it's a go at this station so long as you are okay with excess penetration. What do you think? Would you be willing to rely on this for home defense? Do you keep a different 6.5 load in your home defense rifle? Leave a comment below and let us know. I hope that you found this video informative, or maybe at the very least entertaining. If you think I've earned it, please help support our channel by liking and sharing and commenting and subscribing. That's not just some BS that YouTubers say at the end of videos. All of those actions are forms of engagement that drive the decisions made by the algorithm. And because subscribing doesn't really mean anything anymore, make sure to click that bell icon down below so you can actually get a notification when we post a new video. If you want to find out how to rent a Phantom V642 or other high-speed camera just like the one that I used to capture this video, contact Aimed Research. Their contact info is down in that thing down there that nobody reads. Good luck. We're all counting on you.